Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be a continuation of my previous video on the Nikon 2X teleconverter for the 70-200 f2.8 for the Z-mount. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the introduction today. I did want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I've been kind of running into while using this combination uh, with the teleconverter. A couple things that I have noticed is that the focus acquisition is a little slower, it seems like to me, using the teleconverter. Now that could be just up here, that could be my problem, <laughs> not a problem with the, the teleconverter itself or maybe it's a setup issue. So uh, I'm going to keep playing around with that. Um, I have switched over to using kind of what is the equivalent of group autofocus or in the, in the area focus area there. So the, the what used to be group AF and on the DSLR side, this one's more of a wide area um, autofocus is what I'm using, but I'm using the small version of that wide area autofocus. So um, I've seen in certain low light scenarios, it seems like, especially, uh, it's a little bit slower to acquire uh, focus. So now that, just, that could just be an issue with um, any uh, longer lens, perhaps. I don't know. I haven't used the 100 to 400 or the 200 to 600. So those of you who have used those, maybe you can reach out and let me know if that's um, a, an issue. But um, so far, that's the only issue that I've seen with it. Um, we're going to pop on the computer. We're going to take a look at a few images of bears and beavers and geese and deer and those fun things, which I'm sure everyone will love. I uh, did run into some bears just recently coming off the trail. Um, I say run into, luckily I did not get that close to them, <laughs> but they were literally right behind my car when I came out on the trail. So I did get some a few good images, I think, of the bears with the cubs. So I think it's the same mama bear that, and I'll post a link in the video that I took um, photos on before I acquired the teleconverter. So I'll post that. But anyway, let's hop on the computer. I don't want to spend much more time on the intro. We'll see what you guys think. Take a look at some bears, some beaver, some deer. <laughs> And we'll go from there. Okay, we are back on the computer and I am going to start with the bears because I'm sure that's what everybody's here to really see. I have got uh, Lightroom pulled up and I am going through the images of the bears to start with here. And I have tried to stay away from making any image edits, uh, any post image edits. If you look on the right hand side here in the screen, you'll see that the only thing that I have done is bumped up the exposure uh, because I shot this, this was right towards the end of the evening, right around sunset. So you can see that, so let's, I just wanna kinda of show you how well the, uh, or how amazing the dynamic range is for one thing uh, with this camera. Now this has nothing to do with the 2X teleconverter, but if I just dial this back to where I originally shot it at, I shot this way underexposed because I was trying to keep my shutter speed up there to a reasonable range because it was so dark. But look at the way, or how well it does resolving those, um, the shadows and everything. Just the, the dynamic range is just pretty amazing, actually. So pretty decent image. Um, so I'm just going to skip through some of these images that I was able to capture there towards the end of the evening. As you can tell here, there's a little parking uh, bar in the foreground. That's where those guys were. We're literally right along the edge of the parking lot. Yeah, I'm just going to skip through a couple of these images. This one's pretty decent. I kind of like this one quite a bit. Um, you're, you're starting to see a little bit of movement, of course, because uh, I was able, uh, only able to shoot this at 1 100th of a second um, at f5.6. And you see that my ISO is already bumped up to 1250 here, so um, not a lot of options when you're shooting that late at night. Literally, it was like around 9 p.m., so right at sunset. Sunset in the mountains and in the forest is a little different. It's actually um, a lot darker um, around sunset because the the mountains are blocking the sun, of course, and of course the trees are too, so that just makes it even darker. So, pretty amazing that I was able to capture this much detail at 400 millimeters at 9 p.m. at night. So let's just kind of skip through some of these. I don't want to bore everyone with every single image, but I did want to kind of give you an idea of what the teleconverter is capable of. This is probably one of my favorites, and I think either this image or uh, another one that's coming up I may put as a thumbnail, so we'll see. So another image, pretty decent. Look at the hairs on the bear, pretty, pretty, pretty good, especially considering how late at night it was. Uh, the fact that I'm shooting the ISO 1250 already. Um, this little guy here loved the eyes and the fact he's got the pollen all over him, so that's a great image as well. Probably won't post that one because it's a little bit blurry. Um, I think just we're just getting a little bit of movement probably from these guys, and especially at 1 100th of a second. Uh, Another good one. This one might be the uh, either this one or I think the next one. Yeah, that one there I loved it because it looked like they're actually posing. <laughs> so that one may very well be the thumbnail. Again, details are quite impressive. You can see the hairs and the bear. Um, that late at night, um, 
like I said, I bumped this up to almost two and a third stops um, in Lightroom to resolve or to kind of get around that, uh, that underexposure issue because of the fact that I was trying to keep my shutter speed up there and not go too high on the ISO. So, so I'm just going to scroll through with some of these other ones. These I haven't really starred. These weren't really impressive images, but um, you can kind of get a size of that mama bear was pretty, pretty good size. That one I kind of liked because you can see the little cub's face right up on the other side of uh, Mama Bear, of course. Again, you can see that I'm bumping this up to full stops in Lightroom. And the level of detail, good grief. Um, un unbelievable in my opinion. So another one, good image of the, of the bear. I mean, obviously it's the tail end of the bear, so not exactly, <laughs> you know, your ideal image. But, uh, you know, like I said, some of the hairs on the bear are very impressive. Um, they're resolved quite well. This one I thought was really good too as well. Um, also probably worth, uh, could be worth putting up on the only, um, well, it could be worth posting, I suppose, but um, I really love the little, little guy's face there. Um, but Mama Bear's head kind of got cut off, so that's the only downside of this image, so it probably won't go as the thumbnail. And let's just take a look at one final image of the bear there. Like again, look at the hairs on the bear. You know, that late at night, nine o'clock at night, I have bumped this up, look at that. I have bumped that up two and two thirds of a stop um, in Lightroom to pull out the shadows and everything. And I have not even touched the shadows or any of the other sliders. So just keep that in mind that I'm giving you a pretty raw image here. Uh, very little to no post-processing whatsoever. Just bumped up the exposure. All right, so let's go move on from the bears. Everybody's probably bummed about that, but that's all the images that I got of the bears. Had to get out of the park because the, you know, the park ranger comes and closes the gate around that time too. So a lot of people were leaving uh, the parking lot as those bears were kind of wandering around, although they did have quite, a, um, quite an audience, I will have to say. So, all right, so let's move over to the beavers. And this was a little bit earlier in the day, not um, great from a lighting perspective, still uh, around maybe about 30 minutes before sunset, 30 to 45 minutes. So you can see that I'm not having to bump up your exp the exposure nearly as much, but pretty nice image actually, I think. And it was a pretty good distance away on this one. I don't know how far, maybe around 40, 50 meters, something along those lines, maybe farther. Um, you can see he's got his eyes closed there. Um, that was not too bad. Let's see, this one is not too bad, I think, as well. Um, those dark fur things, well, it's really hard to see their eyes. So you, can, you see that I think I probably missed the focus a little bit. And this was also where I was using that wide area of focus. The detail in the grass is really good, but I do feel like I kind of missed the focus just a little bit. Uh, I think it has a tendency, if there's a lot of um, uh, distractions in the image, it gets a little bit lost um, with the teleconverter, I feel like. And so maybe I should use more of a pinpoint type focus. So if you look at the grass, the grass is really in focus, but uh, the beaver is just a tiny bit out. So, all right, so let's look at one more image here. Um, you can see the beaver there kind of giving me the cold shoulder. His eyes actually quite uh, in focus there. So pretty good, pretty good there. Love the detail, love the detail. It's really pretty impressive. And another one there. We zoomed in to 200%. You can see his eye there. That one's probably, I think we're getting probably a little bit of motion blur there. Shot that in a hundredth of a second. So. A lot of these are just, because of low light conditions, I just didn't have the ability to um, to really bump up my shutter speed the way I should. So you're gonna get a little bit of motion blur in there, of course. Yep, another one, pretty similar image as far as that's concerned, but the detail and the hairs and everything, pretty good. Um, like I said, I think I missed it. This one I've done some post-processing on because I sent this to some uh, family members. So, um, but, uh, so you can see that it's a little bit more vibrant perhaps. So I bumped up the vibrance and the clarity just a tiny bit, not a lot. Uh, bumped my highlights down, that kind of thing. So that's probably something I would, would do in post-processing anyway. That's at 200%, let's just look at 100%. Detail is still pretty impressive. Um, like I said, I'm probably getting a little tiny bit of motion blur in this. So I think that's why the, the, the beaver does not really look tack sharp. But. Either that or I missed the focus just a tiny bit. So let's move on. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on the geese. I liked that image. That was a pretty good one of the, the little chicklets there. Also, for, I mean, everything's at 400 millimeters, of course, here on all these images. That's pretty decent. Uh, that one there I kind of liked. I like this his head there. You can see this detail as he's coming towards me. So that's probably why I ranked that one a little bit higher in the process. And yeah, let's just look at one more. 
Uh, look at the detail in the hairs there. Pretty impressive. That's an ISO 1000. At, uh, that's 1 160th of a second. Um, you can see that I was able to stop the action down just a little bit more. 400 millimeters using that teleconverter. Um, my depth of field is pretty, pretty small there at 5.6. Not a bad image. And I'm going to skip over to a couple of... Sorry, um, and unfortunately, this is one of those things that um, as you get out, you'll notice up here in the upper right hand corner, this was shot at 270 millimeters. It was not shot at 400. Um, when I pulled it out of my bag, I did not realize. Uh, I got a little excited seeing the deer off in the distance. And then of course, we got some more bear pictures in here. This was um, a while back and I saw the bear kind of uh, coming through the, uh, the grass there. And so obviously I was not paying as good attention as I would have liked. <laughs> So even at 270 millimeters, still pretty good. It seemed like every time though, this guy was hiding behind some set of grass. And so I think, so this is a different bear, obviously. This was a, this is a smaller guy here. So I just want to skip along there. Also hidden behind the grass. What can you do? That's wildlife photography, right? And so let's go ahead and finish that off. Uh, let's finish the series off here. Um, look at a couple more bear pictures. Uh, this one I really liked. Uh, just because of the fact that it kind of shows the bear and he's like he's on a journey or something like that. So I've had other people tell me the same thing. He was wandering straight down the road. Pretty amazing to think about um, bears just wandering down the road there. And let's see, this guy, you can see where I cropped that one. So, and I think we have, I have one more that I kind of liked with him crossing the road there. I thought that was a pretty cool shot. So you see that I actually cropped that. So that's it. And let's do one more. I think I wanted to kind of show. Yes. So this one's cropped in a bit. I did like this one a fair amount. Um, this is what it looked like originally, and you can see how I've cropped down all the rest of that exterior there. This deer was quite inquisitive, so just stood there, stood there and stared at me, but would not move. So pretty smart deer, actually. He was like, I am not revealing my position, so if you can see me, that's great, but I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. But uh, I hope everyone has a great rest of the day. I hope you enjoyed these images. I hope that kind of gives you a little bit more of a feel of what the 2X teleconverter is capable of. Uh, I'm gonna keep going uh, out there and shooting. Uh, eventually I'll make a full review video, but I kind of want to push that out uh, into the future, maybe a few more months. So I have at least enough experience with different focusing uh, options and lighting conditions and everything else to really give a true review. But so far, pretty impressive stuff. Really love some of the images that are coming out. I hope everyone has a great day. We'll talk to you soon.